Good afternoon, everybody. Um, just let me know if you all can hear me, please. All right, cool. Th thanks for the feedback, there. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So in this session, what I'm gonna be focusing on, um, in terms of the broad topics that CXA indicated, right? Um, they said you're gonna get the mole concept and acids, bases, and salts, right? Um, based on my experience, they are referring to question one here on the paper, and I'm assuming that most of you have seen what an exam paper looks like, right? Um, what that means is that the paper one, the question one, sorry, is typically worth about 25 marks, right? And there may be some calculations inside of there. There are various types of questions they can ask in the question one, but the fact that they said more concept, acid, bases, and salts, um, this is what I'm going to be focusing on, right? Um, I know a lot of students, they get scared when it comes to moles, right? Um, and the thing is, for some students, yes, it's a bit difficult, right? Um, but it's not as bad as you think, guys, right? Um, in school, sometimes they try to teach you formulas in order to help you with the moles. I can safely tell you that I have never, ever learned of a single formula for moles, right? I have never done that in form 4, form 5, up to form 6. I got the highest mark in E-level chemistry in Trinidad and I have never learned of a single formula for moles, right? What you need to understand when it comes to moles is to try to understand what is actually taking place when you are mixing substances or when things are reactive, right? That's what you need to pay attention to. So let's see. So I. I made up a few questions here for us to just take a look at first before we do any exam type questions, right? Even though this is essentially what could be asked in the exam, right? Now, here's what we have here. We have a student that wanted to determine the concentration of a solution of sodium hydroxide, right? So you have a solution of sodium hydroxide and we don't know what the concentration is. So that's unknown to us, right? Now, on the other hand, you have 25, um, what he did, he placed 25 cm cube of sodium hydroxide in a conical flask with an indicator, right? Now, you all are writing exam just now. I'm hoping that you all actually did a titration in the lab before, right? Um, so a titration is something that is very common and you have to be able to do a titration. And what we do we try to determine the concentration of an unknown, um, of a substance that we know, but we don't know the concentration, right? Now, when it comes to titrations, there's something called a standard solution, right? That could be an exam question. What is a standard solution? A standard solution in chemistry is a solution of known concentration, right? So if you see that question in the exam, that is what they want for the answer. A standard solution is a solution of known concentration, right? So in this particular question here, we don't know what the sodium hydroxide is, but we're going to titrate the sodium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid, which we know what that solution is, that concentration is, sorry. So if we look carefully here, the concentration of the hydrochloric acid is 0.15 mole per dm cube, right? And what we are saying is that you require 20 cm cube of hydrochloric acid in order for neutralization to take place. Now, try to make sure you understand what's happening here. So in a titration, we have a conical flask, right? And we use a pipette 
to put some, in this case here we're using sodium hydroxide. So make sure you understand what's happening here. So this is sodium hydroxide we are adding to a conical flask. That's what it looks like, right? And to do that, we're going to use something called a pipette, right? So that's the tool that looks like this, right? So a pipette gives you a fixed volume of a substance. So what you do, you in most schools, they either use a pipette to suck the sodium hydroxide into the pipette, or if you're in a fancier school, you may have a, a rubber bomb to allow you to um, fill the pipette with the sodium hydroxide, right? Either way, we need to fill the, so the pipette with the sodium hydroxide. In this case, um, we are using 25 cm cube in the conical flask. So what you're going to do here, so this here is 25 cm cube, right? In the conical flask, what we normally do, we add an indicator to the um, sodium hydroxide, right? So there are different indicators that um, you may have met along the way. So we have things like metal orange, we have cream metal orange, we have phenolphthalein, right? There are various indicators we can use in order to determine the end point of a titration, right? And the end point of the titration is when all of the acid has reacted with all of the sodium hydroxide, right? Now, what else do we know? So then we're going to add the hydrochloric acid to the sodium hydroxide. Now, in order to do that, what we use, we use a different tool, something called a burette, right? So this here is my burette that we're going to add my acid with, right? So this is HCl, right? We don't know how much HCl as yet we need to add, but what we do know is the concentration of the hydrochloric acid which is 0 0.5, 0 0.15, sorry, mole per dm cube, right? So this here is the concentration of my hydrochloric acid, right? And this here is what I said we call the pipette, right? So the pipette is used to add a fixed volume of a liquid, right, to the conical flask in this case here. So I'm just trying to paint a picture for you all so you understand what is being added to what, right? So you have the sodium hydroxide in the conical flask, right? you put an indicator inside of it that's going to allow us to determine the end point now the indicator will be a color in alkali in an alkaline substance it will have a particular color in acid it'll have a different color so as soon as you reach the end point of the titration there's going to be a color change so you are continuously adding the hydrochloric acid to the sodium hydroxide until we get a color change right um and the whole objective here is to actually find the volume of acid we require in order to do so, right? So let's see now. Um, make sure you don't ask me anything. Right. So they, they did the titration, right? And they realized 20 cm cube of the hydrochloric acid is required for complete neutralization, right? The first part. Typically, CXC might ask you to write an equation, a balance equation, by the way, in order to show what's happening. So you're adding, you're reacting sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. This sodium hydroxide is an alkali and the hydrochloric acid, well, it's an acid. So you are adding an acid and an alkali. So my products will be salt and water, right? So for part A, you are adding sodium hydroxide. Now, please, you all need to get into the habit of writing your um, state symbols. So it's AKS in this case, sodium hydroxide, plus hydrochloric acid, right, which is AKS as well, right? Now, you're adding an alkali plus an acid. There are two products that you will get. You will get a salt. In this case, I'm going to get sodium chloride as my salt. So it's NaCl AQ because it's going to be in solution, plus water. Water is always going to be produced when I add an alkali to an acid, right? And this will be, this will be liquid here, right? And what you need to do, you need to make sure that your equation is balanced. If your equation is not balanced, guys, then when you do the mole calculations, you will get it wrong, right? So that equation needs to be balanced. If I look at this equation, I have one mole of sodium here, one mole of sodium here. So that's good. In terms of oxygen, I have one oxygen on the left one oxygen on the right so that's okay in terms of hydrogen i have one here one here so therefore i have two hydrogens on the left hand side and on the right hand side i have two so the hydrogen is balanced then you look at the chlorine you have one here and you have one here so as it stands 
right? The equation is balanced, right? So as it stands here, the equation is balanced, right? Now, this is a, a well-known equation, so please make sure you know this equation, right? Sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid, you get sodium chloride plus um, water, right? So you might typically get maybe one mark or two marks for that. The next part now, part B, calculate the number of moles in the 20 cm cube of hydrochloric acid. Now remember, you did the titration and you use the burette to figure out how much hydrochloric acid we needed, right? And we got this, we got 20. So when you did the experiment, you got 20. And I want you to work out how much moles is in that 20. Now, you know the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. It is 0.15 mole per dm cube. So, let's do that. So, the acid, the HCl, right, is 0 0.15 mole per dm cube, right? That's my concentration of the hydrochloric acid, right? Now, what does that really mean, 0.15 mole per dm cube? You all need to know that one dm cube is actually equal to 1000 cm cube, right? I'm going to make use of this here. So if my concentration is 0.1 mole per dm cube, that tells me something. That says that in 1000 cm cube, right, of solution, I have 0.15 moles of hydrochloric acid. That is what that is telling me. So I'm going to write a statement along those lines. So I'm going to say 1000 cm cube, right? contains 0 0.15 moles HCl, right? That is what this is telling me here. That tells me that 1000 cm cube contains 0.15 moles. That's what that is telling me. The next thing I need to do now, remember the question is asking, how much moles do we have in 20 cm cube of the acid? So what I'm going to do is, therefore, 20 cm cube, right, contains, so I've taught this in my online classes many times, what I'm essentially doing here is cross multiplying. I need to take this 20, multiply by the 0.15, so it's 20 multiplied by 0 0.15, and then I must divide by this number here, which is 1000. So I'm cross multiplying, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm taking it 20 by 0.15 and divided by 1000, right? Um, so let's see, I think I do have my calculator up, yeah, I do. Right, so this is the typical calculator that I use for all my subjects that I teach, maths, chemistry and physics, right? Um, so let's see, what do we want to work out? It's 20 by 0.15 over 1000. So, we're going to say 20 multiplied by 0.15 divided by 1000 and what you're going to get is 0 0.03 right that's what you're going to get there so 0 0.003 so you're going to get 0 0.003 moles HCl right now that calculation there is pretty straightforward for all you know, they may give you either one or two marks for that calculation, right? So that's part B, right? So just like that, we've completed part B. Now in part C now, they said calculate the number of moles in 25 cm cube of sodium hydroxide. Now, we don't know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide, eh? we don't, we don't have that information. So, what we have to do, we have to use our equation in order to figure that out, right? That's what we have to do. We have to use our equation in order to figure that out. Now, this is the part that some students have trouble with. So, this is part C. I'm going to just write back what the equation was. It was NaOH, right? And I'm going to put the state symbols this time, right? Plus HCl. And that produces NaCl plus H2, right? That's my equation. Now, in part B, you worked out how many moles of the hydrochloric acid you had, right? Which was 0 0.003. 
So according to this equation, this equation, once it's balanced, it tells me something, guys, right? In front of the sodium hydroxide, there's no number there. That number is actually taken as one, if you're not seeing a number there. In front of the HCl, there's no number in front of it, but we're gonna take that as a one. In front of the sodium chloride, there's no number in front of it, so there's a one there. And in front of the water, there is a one there. Those numbers that I've written down there has to do with the amount of moles right so according to this equation right according to this equation um one mole right of hcl reacts with one mole nacl i'm sorry hcl one mole of sorry any which right one mole any which so one mole of the hydrochloric acid is going to react with one mole of the sodium hydroxide. But you just worked out how much moles of HCl we had used in this particular titration. You had used 0 0.003 moles of HCl. So therefore, this is what you're going to say. Therefore, 0 0.003 moles of HCl right, will react or reacts with Right? In this particular instance, it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio. So if 1 mole of HCl react with 1 mole of NaOH, it means that 0 0.003 moles should react with that same amount. So therefore, this should be 0 0.03 moles NaOH. Right? So the question asks, how much moles in 25 cm cube of the sodium hydroxide? Remember, at the start of the titration, you had used the pipette to transfer 25 cm cube of NOH. So in that um, 25 cm cube, that is how many moles I have there. So you could say that 25 cm cube NOH contains, right, this answer that we just, we just got here, 0 0.003 moles, right? So this here, this is my answer here, that's it. That's the answer for part C, right? Now I hope you guys are um, following what I'm doing here, right? Right, so this is part C. The next part we're going to work out is part D. Calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide in mole per dm cube. Right, now this is typically how we get an exam question on titration here. Right, um, but what they will do, they will give you pictures of the, of the burette and then it will ask you to take measurements. Right, so we'll do a few of those questions just now. So they want the concentration of the sodium hydroxide in mole per dm cube. Now here's what you do know. You do know that 25 cm cube of NaOH contains 0 0.003 moles, right? Now, whenever they ask you to find the concentration of something, we need to find how many moles in a thousand um, cm cube, right? So, part D, this is what we have to do. So, we know that 25 cm cube, right, of NaOH contains. Um, 0 0.003 moles, right? That's what we know from part C. All we really need to do here now is to work out how many moles we have in a thousand in order to determine the concentration, right? So therefore, 1,000 cm cube of any wage, right, contains, and you're gonna cross multiply. All, almost all the mole calculations, we're gonna have to cross multiply. You're taking this number, multiply by this number, so it's a thousand, multiply by 0 0.003, and then we're going to divide by 25, divide by 25, right? Again, I'm going to use my calculator in order to do that, right? So, multiplying this by 1000, multiply by 1000, you get this, and then you divide by 25. 
and what you're getting as a concentration is 0 0.12 right so you're getting 0.12 so this here is 0 0.12 moles right so therefore the concentration so by the way if you don't want to write the word concentration in chemistry right if you put in this case sodium hydroxide in square brackets that actually means concentration right so the concentration of the sodium hydroxide is 0 0.12 mole per dm cube right you write all the words if you want but this is just short and i'm using here right so what I've done, I've worked out the concentration of the sodium hydroxide, which we did not know what it was at the start of the titration, right? So we worked out. And then the last part of the question now, which is something that they typically ask us, um, they can ask you, calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide in gram per dm cube. So they want you to convert from mole per dm cube to gram per dm cube. And that is something very, very straightforward to do. All we need to do, you need to find the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So sodium, what I've done here, I've given you the relative atomic mass of these things. Sodium is 23, oxygen is 16, and hydrogen is 1, right? So to find the molar mass, which is the mass of one mole of sodium hydroxide, it's going to be sodium is 23 plus 16, right, plus hydrogen, which is 1, and that, I think that should give us, what, 40, I think? 23 plus 16 plus 1. Yeah, that'll give us 40 right so the relative atomic mass right or the relative molar mass of sodium hydroxide is 40 grams right so all you need to do is to convert the 0.12 into grams so one mole right NaOH right has a mass of um, 40 grams right so therefore you need to work out for 0 0.2 0 0.12 sorry 0 0.12 mole NaOH right and we cross multiply so this is 0 0.12 multiplied by 40 divided by 1 and that's going to give me so 0 0.12 by 40 divided by well right so this is 4.8 right so this here is 4.8 right grams so therefore the concentration of the NaOH in gram per dm cube is going to be 4.8 gram per dm cube right all right so somebody asked me if the ratio is different right so the second example i'm going to give you all the ratio is different right so the second one i'm going to do the ratio is different right so this is a typical exam question guys right typical exam question so i'm going to do a second one before i actually look at an actual password for him right um remember let's read it through make sure i didn't make any mistakes when i typed it up uh students in question drop side all right so again Right? It's very similar to the last one, but what I've done, I've changed what the reagents are. Right? So in this particular case, the student is, is interested in figuring out the concentration of something called potassium hydroxide. Right? So potassium hydroxide is this formula, KOH. Right? So you can use potassium hydroxide in some titrations. Right? Um, you place 25 cm cube of the potassium hydroxide in a conical flask. So very similar to what we did just now, you're going to have a conical flask, right? And you're going to place um, 25 cm cube of the potassium hydroxide. So this here is 25 cm cube of potassium hydroxide, which is KOH. In a conical flask, you add the indicator, right? And then you're going to titrate with sulfuric acid. So I change the acid this time. It's sulfuric acid. So you're going to add sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. So you all need to be familiar with your formulas for your different acids. So sulfuric acid is H2SO4, and you know what the concentration is. It is 0.2, so it is 0 0.2 mole per dm cube. That's my concentration of my sulfuric acid. And what I'm telling you is that when you do the titration, 
22 cm cube of sulfuric acid <coughs> was required for complete neutralization. So this here is 22 cm cube, right? So now let's see if we can answer the questions. So part A, write a balanced equation for the reaction between potassium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. So in part A, potassium hydroxide is KOH, and this is aqueous because it's in solution, plus sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4 aqueous, right? Produces. So when I'm adding an alkali to an acid, right, just like in the previous question, we're gonna get a salt and we're gonna get water. So the salt in this case will be potassium sulfate, right, which is K2SO4 aqueous, right? Now, you all need, as one of the first things that you all should have learned in chemistry, is how to write chemical equations, right, and how to balance equations. That's the first thing I normally teach my class, right? Make sure you can write equations and make sure you can balance equations, right? And you need to be able to write formulas of substances. So I'm reacting potassium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. So my salt is going to be potassium sulfate, right? Plus, we're going to get water. So plus H2O, liquid, right? Now, if you look at the equation properly, you realize, wait a minute, it is not balanced because I have one potassium here, but I have two across it. So this equation as it is, right? We are not as lucky as in the first question, but this equation is not balanced. So let's see if we can balance that. If I put a two in front of it, let's see if that makes it balanced. So I have two potassium on the left, I have two on the right. So potassium is okay. If we look at the oxygen, you have two here and you have four here. So that gives me a total of six. When you go on the right hand side, you realize, wait, I have four here, but if you look at this, I only have um, one on this side. So that's five oxygen on the right hand side. So therefore, I need to put a two in front of this to help us balance it. So now the oxygen is balanced on the left and right. In terms of hydrogen, you have two here, and you have two here, so that's four. And on the right hand side, we have four. So as the equation stands, it is balanced, right? So this is my balanced equation for this particular reaction, right? Now, like I said, if you all make a mistake in balancing equation, right, chances are you're gonna get a question wrong, right? That is important. Now, let's see what do we wanna do now. Right, so we have this. So that's my balance equation. Let me just um, clear up some things here. So let's erase this, erase this. Right, so that's my equation, it's balanced. Now let's see what we wanna do now. In the first part, we want to calculate the number of moles in 22 cm cube of the sulfuric acid. So you know the concentration of the sulfuric acid, it is 0.2 mole per dm cube. So this is part B. And the sulfuric acid is H2SO4, right? And that is, how much we said? Point, 0.20 mole per dm cube. Right, so 0 0.20 mole per dm cube. Right, that's my concentration of my sulfuric acid, and we use 22 cm cube of the sulfuric acid. So, therefore, I need to put this somewhere here. Right, so I use 22 cm cube. Right, and the question is asking what or how many moles do we have in this 22. So, you know the concentration, right? So, therefore, we can say that 1000 cm cube of sulfuric acid contains right 0 0.20 moles right so I got that information from this eh? once you know the concentration you know how much moles we have in a thousand so therefore we need to work out for 22 so therefore 22 cm cube of H2SO4 Right, contains and we're going to cross multiply again so it's going to be 22 multiplied by 0 0.20 over 1000 right so some students when they work this question they forget to divide by a thousand so please try not to make that mistake in the exam right so I'm going to take 22 so let's use the calculator here 22 multiplied by 0.2 equal 
divided by 1000 and I'm going to get 0 0.044 so two zeros and two fours 0 0.0044 right moles right so that's it that's my answer for part B right I knew the concentration I know the volume of acid that I use which was 22 right now part C now we started to talk about the potassium hydroxide that's the one we don't know the concentration of but we know we use 25 cm cube so here's what you have to do for that particular one in that particular one we have to use our equation in order to figure out how the potassium hydroxide reacts with the sulfuric acid right so let me just um let's just write back the equation on this idea it was 2 koh plus sulfuric acid which was h2so4 and that was producing K2SO4 right plus 2H2O right that was my equation here now according to this equation right so somebody asked me a little while ago what if the mole ratio is different so look at this in front of the potassium hydroxide you have a 2 here in front of the sulfuric acid we have a 1 there you don't see any 1 but there's a 1 there right so two moles of potassium hydroxide reacts with one mole of sulfuric acid. That is what the equation is telling me, right? Now let's look and see what they trying, what we're trying to work out. We're trying to work out the number of moles of potassium hydroxide. Now when I'm writing my statement, because I want to work out the number of moles of potassium hydroxide, my statement has to be written in such a way that potassium hydroxide is on the right hand side. So let me show you what that means. It means According to this equation, one mole of sulfuric acid right, reacts with two moles potassium hydroxide. So I'm getting this statement straight from this, you know. That's where I'm getting that statement from. Right? According to that equation, one mole of sulfuric acid will react with two moles of potassium hydroxide. But in the previous part of the question, you worked out how much sulfuric acid we had, which was this figure here, 0 0.0044. So you're going to say, therefore, 0 0.0044 moles of sulfuric acid right, reacts with, right, now, since you know the mole ratio is 1 to 2, what you have to do here, you have to take the 0 0.0044 and multiply by 2, I'm going to divide by 1, right? I know dividing by 1 doesn't make a difference, but I try to emphasize this because when students start to do a set of mole calculations, they need to understand what they're doing. So when you multiply this, you're going to get 0 0.0088 moles potassium hydroxide, right? That's what you're going to get. Right, so therefore, and remember we use 25 cm cube of the potassium hydroxide. So therefore, 25 cm cube, right, of KOH contains 0 0.0088 moles. Right? So I'm only able to figure out this piece of the question by using my equation. Right? So that is part C. Now part D now, which is the whole purpose of the titration, is to find the concentration of something that we don't know, which is the potassium hydroxide. And we want that in mole per dm cube. So all we need to do, you're almost there because you know that in 25 cm cube you have this amount of moles. So all you need to do is to work out for a thousand. Right? So that is, what part of the question is that? That is... That's part D, right? So that's part D. So 25 cm cube, right? Um, of QH, right? Contains what you just got? Point zero zero eight eight zero point zero zero eight eight moles, right? 
therefore 1000 because when you're working out concentration you're really working out how many moles we have in a thousand of KOH contains and you cross multiply so it's going to be a thousand multiply by 0 0.0088 over 25 right so let's do that um, so let me pull back up the calculator here so that is 1000 multiplied by 0 0.0088 oh boy hold on oh, extra zero there right put your divided by 25 so divide by 25 and you're going to get 0 0.352 so 0 0.352 so this is 0 0.352 moles right so therefore nobody question ask for concentration so the concentration of the potassium hydroxide so like i said when you use square brackets around a formula that means concentration so this is going to be 0 0.352 right mole per dm cube that's my concentration of the potassium hydroxide right and then the last part of the question we want to convert that concentration into gram per dm cube that's what we want right and i've given you the relative atomic mass of potassium oxygen and hydrogen right so um potassium hydroxide we need to work out the molar mass right so that is going to be equal to mass of potassium is 39 plus oxygen is 16 plus 1 right and that's going to give me um Fifty-six. So this is going to be fifty-six grams here, right? So that's gram per mole. So what we're going to say here is um, one mole potassium hydroxide, right? That has a mass of fifty-six grams. So therefore, we're working out for zero point three five two point three five two moles potassium hydroxide. Right, and we're going to cross multiply 0 0.352 multiplied by 56 over 1, and that's going to give us 19.7 gram. So the concentration of the potassium hydroxide, right, is going to be equal to 19.7 gram per dm cube. Right, so I hope you all following what's happening here, right? In terms of the calculation. Right? So we've just done two calculations here. Important because you all need to be able to do this, right? Um, Alright, so so like I said guys, um, I do give online maths, add maths, physics and chemistry classes, right? Um, those interested, especially those entering form four, right? You can send me a WhatsApp at this number here, right? So those of you who are writing exam now and are calling me to find out if I have a form 5 class right now, my form 5 classes have ended, right? So what you are getting right now here are some material, right? Especially in month of June for free, right? Um, don't send past papers to me to work. That's not what I'm doing, right? I saw somebody send me, told me to work the January 2021 paper. All those papers were actually completed in my live online classes already. already. So I'm not going to be doing that here, right? Um, I'm a past national scholarship winner, the highest mark in A-level chemistry, Cambridge, right? Um, so I have a fair idea as to what is required for 
um, chemistry exams, right? So let's take a look at this question here, right? It's an exam question. So a student is provided with a standard solution of aqueous sodium hydroxide, right? Containing X grams of sodium hydroxide in a 250 cm3 solution, right? Now one of the things that, that, um, that students have to do, especially in E-level physics, I'm sorry, E-level chemistry, you have to make up your own solutions. At the CSEC level, you go into the lab and they will tell you what the concentrations are. You don't have to make up anything. So in the school, they give you the solutions already made up, right? Um, but what you have to do when you reach into form six, you have to make up your solutions in some instances. So this one here, um, they added X grams of sodium hydroxide to a 250 cm3 solution. So we have something called a volumetric flask, right? And that's what we use to make up our solutions, right? In order to determine the mass of sodium hydroxide used, he titrated 25 cm3 portions of the solution with 0 0.025 mole per dm3 sulfuric acid and a suitable indicator, right? Now, what they've done here, they've given us um, pictures, right, of our burette. Right? So you see you have initial reading, final reading, initial reading. So they did the titration three times. Typically, that's what we do with our titration. We do it more than once. The first titration is called our rough titration because we don't know where the end point is in the titration. So we there perform any titration, waiting for the color change, and you might miss the end point. Because you there mix in, mix in, you're not paying attention, and all of a sudden you see the color change. So what you do, the first titration is what we call a rough, and you could discard that reading if you made a mistake. So the, the rough is to, to give us a ballpark figure. So let's say you saw a color change around 25, 26 cm cube. You know, well, all right, this is what I'm looking for. So when you do this titration a second time, you're going to slow down. Because remember the pipette, the, sorry, the burette has a, has a tap, something you could turn on and off. So when you see you almost reach what the rough value was, you're going to slow down your burette, right? Until you get the end point. And then you can do the, the titration a third time. Typically, that's what we do. We do the titration at least three times, right? So they've given us some, some pictures of what is seen on the burette. Now let's see what they want here. Describe the process involved in preparing a standard solution of aqueous sodium hydroxide, right? Now, like I said, I told you all what a standard solution is. A standard solution is a solution of known concentration. So you know what the concentration is. Right? That's what standard solution means. So if you see that in the exam next month, that's what it is. Right? So it's a solution of known concentration. And how do you make it up? Basically, we have something called a volumetric flask. Right? No, I can't draw too well, right? But a volumetric flask looks something like this. Right? And there is a marker here. Right? And when you reach that marker here, so the volumetric flask has a specific volume. So in this case here, this volumetric flask has a volume of 250 cm3. To make a standard solution of the sodium hydroxide, what you're doing, you're going to take, so we have, in the lab we have something called an electronic balance, right? So the electronic balance looks like this, and it has some numbers, right? I just drawing something here, right? I just, this is an electronic balance here, right? So what you would do, you would take some sodium hydroxide is actually a powder so you're going to put some sodium hydroxide inside here so this here is sodium hydroxide and what you're doing you actually determine the mass of sodium hydroxide now we don't know what this value is here so they're saying it's x grams we don't know what it is you're going to take that x grams and you're going to put it inside your volumetric flask so you have x grams you're going to put it inside here and then what we're going to do, we're going to add distilled water until we reach a marker, right? That's how you're making up the standard solution. So you have your volumetric flask. You're going to put X grams of the sodium hydroxide inside of the volumetric flask. And then you're going to make it up with distilled water, right? So you're going to pour distilled water until you reach the marker, right? When you finish with that, you close it and you're going to shake it up. Right? When you shake it up there, the sodium hydroxide is going to dissolve and what you have just done is created a standard solution. Right? So that's it. That's how we make a standard solution. 
we need to weigh the mass of something, right? We need to take that something, put it in a volumetric flask, and then add distilled water to the volumetric flask. You shake up, and that's it. You have a standard solution there. So some of you, let's see what you are asking here. Doing any AdMath live sessions? I doubt I will do any. Um, I have done some videos on, I think it was differentiation, I believe. There are several videos on the Math channel. You can find them, right? I think I did probably about six years past reports on differentiation questions. Um, physics will be, today's what? Today is chem. Physics is Wednesday, right? Somebody asked about physics. Physics will be Wednesday. And those of you who might be dropping in for maths tomorrow, um, I may be starting a, a little later than 3 o'clock, right? And somebody says they have to go to Spanish oral practice now. Um, what you, the session has been recorded, guys, so you all can get access to it after, right? So that's it for my standard solution. Now let's see if we can tackle the other parts now. So in figure one, it shows the initial and final volumes of the burette. We want to complete the table. Now, in the exam, they give you plenty marks for this, even though you only seen three marks here, right? I've seen where they give you something like nine marks to work, work these things out. So here's what we do. We're looking at, this is my first iteration here, right? This is my initial, this is my final, right? Now, usually, how the burette is, the smallest value is on top, so zero is on top in the burette, and as you go down, right, the volume increases, as the markers on the, on the burette, right? So this is my initial value. So what we do, we usually put the final value first in our table, right? Um, let me ask you all something. What is my reading here in this final for titration one? I want you to tell me what is that reading there? Alright, so I see in somebody saying 28.4, right? Let's see if that's correct. Yep, I'm seeing 28.4. Now there are some students, they make a mistake and they read the thing this way, you know, right? So be careful, it is 28.4. But here's how you're writing that in the table, yeah? Now that's your final. So what you're going to do is 28.40. Please, it needs to be given to two decimal places. Don't just put 28.4 right so keep that in mind you have to put 28.40 not just 28 be careful with that eh? see actually complains about that so that's my uh, final volume my initial volume what's the initial volume So you all give me a better answer, you know, I see you all give me two decimal places. So get into the habit of doing that, right? So this here is 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. .3. So it's 3.30. So my reading here is 3.30, right? To figure out the volume used, right? You're going to take 28.4, right? Subtract 3.3. .3, and what I'm going to get here is 25.1. So this here is 25.10, right? So that's my reading for my first titration. So I'm going to try to do this one a little faster now. So this one here, so let's just, um, this initial reading here is going to be 8.20. So this here is 8.20. This next one here is 33.20. So this here is 33.20. I'm going to read off all of them one time. This one here is going to be 6.60. 
and this one here is going to be 29.89.80 so this here is 29.80 right so I need to take that information and put it in the table so 33.2 8.2 33.20 8.2 and the last one was 29.8 and 6.6 .6. 29.80 and 6.6 right so to get the volume used for each of the titration we just do a subtraction so 33.2 minus 8.2 and you're gonna get in this case I'm getting 25.00 and then last one, 29.8 minus 6.6. .6. I'm going to get 23 point. Sorry, that's not. Let me just double check our last value here. Something looking not too right here. That's 6.6 .6 and 29.8. Yeah, so 29.8 and 6.6, .6, right? So are you all okay with the, the values in the table? Alright, cool. Right. Uh, so just a reminder, guys. So if you haven't done so as yet, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel and also hit like. Right. And you can forward this to anybody you want. Right. That's fine. Go ahead and forward forward the channel to anybody you want. Right. Um, okay. So that's my table. Right. TXC gives you a lot of marks for these things, guys. So what do they want now? They said using the best two values from the table state the average volume of acid to be used now let me tell you all something one time eh? this is something that students need to be aware of so whenever you're doing a titration right now some students here here's what they think eh? they believe that when they ask you for the average volume what they do they take all three values and divide it by three right I want you I want to tell you this from now that is not always the case right so those of you who hear the word average and you think here what i'm going to add up the three of them and divide by three that is incorrect right you have to actually look at the data first so let's look at this table here now to be able to use um like let's say 25.1 or 25.0 or 23.2 we need to compare these values and the values must only be different by plus or minus 0 0.1 for us to use it that is important here right so if you've never seen this before the values must only differ by 0.1 right now if you look at the first value the first value is 25.10 the second value is 25.00 but the third value something wrong with that value I'm getting 23.20 that is way off compared to the first two right so therefore I'm going to ignore that third value right now this is the reasoning that you're using it and she actually expects us to do that so you're looking at the data and you have to decide which values I'm going to use in order to work out the average, right? So the 25.1 and the 25.0, those two are different by 0.1. So therefore, I'm going to use those two values in order to determine the average volume to use. I am going to ignore the last value, right? So if you think I'm talking craziness, that, this is the truth. Eh? This is what CXC wants. This is how they, and how they give marks for these questions. So what you're going to do, so in this part here, when they said, you, and look they said so you know they said use two values from the table using the best two values so the best two values will be the first one and the second one so that will be 25.10 so this is what you're doing 25.10 plus 25.00 and you're going to divide that by two right so we ignore any last value so that's 25.1 plus 25 divided by two and you're going to get 25 Point zero five cm cube, right? That's what I'm going to use. So this is what I'm going to be using in my calculations. If I do have calculations in the question, that's the volume of um, the acid we're going to use, right? 
And remember the acid we used in this question here was what else we use? Sulfuric acid? Was it? Yeah, sulfuric acid. Right? So that's the acid that we use here. We use sulfuric acid. Right? That just to keep you need to be aware of what you're doing in these questions, right? So if you see me writing sulfuric acid or sodium hydroxide, that's for me to know where I'm at in the question, right? Now, they said identify a suitable indicator. You have several indicators you can choose from. You can use um, screen metal orange, uh, metal orange, phenolphthalein, right? So typically in a titration like this, you'll probably use something like metal orange or screen metal orange. And then part B, explain how you will determine the end point. Well, basically, when you put the indicator in the sodium hydroxide, it is going to be a particular color, right? When you keep adding acid to the sodium hydroxide, right, the color is going to change at the end point. At the neutralization point, there's going to be a color change, right? Because at that point, you're going to have a slightly more acid inside of the mixture. So therefore, the color of the indicator changes, right? So you all need to be familiar with certain um, indicators, right? And I'm hoping you all had some labs, hopefully, all right? Now they said write a balance equation for the reaction between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Look at this, eh? two marks. So let's go. This is similar to what we did previously. So sodium hydroxide, aqueous, right? Plus sulfuric acid, H2SO4, aqueous right produces and this here is we're going to get salt in this case the salt is going to be sodium sulfate Na2SO4 aqueous plus H2O liquid right that's my equation however notice what they have here they have balance and they have it in bold if you don't balance it you're not going to get the full two marks as it stands the equation is not balanced so what I need to do, I need to put a 2 here and I need to put a 2 here in order to balance this equation. This equation is similar to the one we did in the second question with the potassium hydroxide. Right? So 2 marks as it is here, this equation is balanced. Now, let's look at the calculation now. Okay, this is the part that gives students trouble. So they want to know the number of moles of sulfuric acid used in the titration. So let's go back to the question. What do we know? All right, so we knew the concentration of the sulfuric acid. It was 0 0.025. So let me just put that somewhere here. So the concentration of the sulfuric acid, H2SO4, right, was 0 0.025 mole per dm cube. Right? That was the concentration of the, um, oh wait, I write it in the wrong place, yes? Concentration of the sulfuric acid. 0 0.025 Right? So make sure I'm correct, right, 0 0.025 mole per dm. So you know the concentration of the sulfuric acid. Um, in terms of how much sulfuric acid we use, that was the purpose of the titration. You see all of these things that you're working out here. This is the volume of my acid. But when you do the titration, they usually ask you for the average volume. So this is what I'm going to be using in my calculation. That 25.05. So what we're going to say, we're going to say, um, so look at the concentration is going to be 1000 cm cube of the sulfuric acid. Right? Contains... 0 0.025 moles right therefore you're going to use the answer you got before which is 25.05 so this here is going to be 25.05 cm cube of sulfuric acid contains and you're going to cross multiply so just like we did in the previous questions 25.05 multiplied by 0 0.025 over 1000 and you use the calculator to work that out so I'm going to just use my calculator that I have here 25.05 multiplied by 0 0.025 divided by 1000 right and you're going to get a really really small number so what I am getting here is 
So you all try to work it out and see if you can get the same answer for me. 0 0.000, 0 0 0.00626 moles. Right? Just let me know if you all get the same answer. Some of you all may write your answer in standard form. If you do, it's going to be 6.26 by 10 to the power 1, 2, 3, minus 4. Right, so either you put this or this. Just let me know if you all get the same answer before I look it up. Alright, so I see Jada got the same answer that I got, so we're cool with that, right? I'm okay with that. Five point zero five multiplied by all right. So you all get the same thing like I got, right? Um, So that's my answer for that part. Let's see what else we need to do now. So they want to know the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in 25 cm cube of solution. Now remember this, the sodium hydroxide is what we didn't know what the concentration was. Now this is where the mole ratio is coming into play. So remember the equation looked like this. It was NaOH right, plus sulfuric acid H2SO4 produces and a 2SO4 right so we have to put in a 2 here and this was 2H2 right so what's happening now we want to figure out how many moles of um, the sodium hydroxide we have in 25 cm cube now according to this equation two moles of sodium hydroxide reacts with one mole of the sulfuric acid right so what we're going to do we're going to say one mole right H2SO4 Right, reacts with two moles. Oh wait, sorry. Yeah, no, okay, that's correct, that's correct. Two moles any which. Right? I thought I was right and wrong. So therefore, you know how much sulfuric acid we had, which is the answer we just got, which is this number here, point zero 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 six two six. So this here is zero point zero 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 six. 26 moles H2SO4 should react to it. All we need to do is to take that number and multiply by 2. So you're going to put 0 0.000, what is it, 4 zeros or 3 zeros? Let me make sure. Alright, so it's 3 zeros, right? Um, 626 multiply by 2, divide by 1. So this answer here is going to be 0.000626 multiplied by 2 and what I'm going to get here is 0 0.00125 moles right so this is the number of moles that actually is in 25 cm cube right Hope you all follow that. All I did there was use the mole ratio in order to do that, right? Right? You all can put it can be um you can put any two here or you can leave it out so it's point zero zero one two five two, right? That's fine. Now the next part, remember you made up a standard solution. So you know that twenty five cm cube, right, which is how much we had pipetted out, right? of any which right contains that number we just got which is 0 0.001252 moles right therefore we need to work out for 250 so therefore 250 cm cube of any which contains 
right? And you're going to cross multiply. So it's going to be 250 multiplied by 0 0.001252 divided by 25. And that's going to give me 0.1252. So what you're going to get here is 0 0.01252 moles, right? So that's the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in 250 cm3. Let's see what they want now. Uh -huh. So the last part now, they're trying to figure out the mass of the sodium hydroxide added to the 250 cm3 of water. Remember at the beginning, they asked you how you make up the standard solution. And they told you that we added X grams to 250 cm3. So what you're really doing in the question is trying to figure out what is that X? What is that value for X? So all you need to do, right? They gave you the relative atomic masses, that's important. So NaOH right, is equal to 23 plus 16 plus 1, and you're going to get 40. right? So what that means is that um, 1 mole, right, NaOH, has a mass of 40 grams. So all you need to do now is to work out the answer you just got, which was um, 0 0.01252 moles NaOH has a mass of, and it cross multiply, right? So you're going to take the point 0 0.01252 and multiply by 40, divide by 1. So when you work out this here, that's going to give me what the mass is supposed to be, right? So what they actually added, that value for x is 0 0.50 grams, right? So the value of x in this case here is 0 0.50 grams. So I'm actually getting 0 0.5008, but I'm just going to put it as 0.50. So this is, this is one way they can ask a question on titration, right? There are many other ways they can ask a question, by the way. So here's another one here. Now, one way of doing a titration, like we did previously there, we can use a pipette, a pipette sorry, and a burette, right? And we can find the end point using our color change, right? So using an indicator to determine the color change. Now, hopefully, you all may have done this as a lab in school, right? So they said, it is possible to determine the end point of an acid-based titration by measuring temperature changes, right? So when we use temperature changes to do a titration, that is called a thermometric titration. And what we're doing, we're using a thermometer in order to do that, right? So we're gonna, what we would do is we would be adding, let's say, what are we doing here? We're using, right, so these are my, um, these are my solutions. This is sodium hydroxide and then we're gonna add sulfuric acid to it so what's happening here you have basically a styrofoam cup right so this is a lab that hopefully you would have done right and in the styrofoam cup you have 25 cm cube so you have 25 cm cube of any which that's what you have here inside of the cup right and then we're gonna keep adding well first of all you're gonna put a thermometer inside here by the way so you have a thermometer here and then you're going to keep adding some acid to the sodium hydroxide. In this case, what are we adding here? Sulfuric acid. So you're adding sulfuric acid to this, right? And every time you add the sulfuric acid, you measure the temperature. So for when you have no acid is added, the temperature of the solution was 22.5. Then you come and you added 3 cm cube, and you got a new temperature of 29.5. You added 6 cm cube, and then we got a new temperature here, right? So the more acid you add, the temperature change is being measured every time. So let's see what they want us to do. So, right, so 
If you notice in the table, you're missing two values. You're missing this value here for temperature and you're missing these two values here for temperature, right? I want you all to read off, tell me what is this first temperature value here. What is that temperature reading? Right, so if you all never saw this before, this is called a thermometric titration. Right, I've seen everybody getting 41 degrees. Let's see if that's correct. Let's see if that's correct. So this one here, now you have, you have, you have to look at the, uh, the scales, right? So this here is 41, right? So every small marker is 0.1 of a degree. So this is actually 41.0 degrees Celsius. What about the second one? What's he reading on the second one? Right, that's in your saying 25. Let's see if that's correct. So, if this is 24.5, that means that here is 24. That means that here is 25. Right, so they try to confuse you a little bit here, but it's really 20, um, 25 degrees. So, this here is 25.0 degrees. Right, Celsius. Right, so the temperature readings they go to one decimal place, right, based on the accuracy of the thermometer. Right, direct you can go to two decimal places, right. So let's put those figures in the table. So this here is going to be 41.0, and this next value here is 25.0. So this is 25.0. Right, so the next thing, what they want us to do now? Uh huh. First part, differentiate between a strong acid and a weak acid. Guys, you all need to know the difference, right? A strong acid is completely ionized in aqueous solution, right? So a strong acid, that's the definition that CXC wants, and nothing else. Don't make up anything for the people, it won't get any marks. So it's um, a strong acid is one that is completely ionized. In aqueous solution. Right? That's your definition. That's what a strong acid is. So strong acids are things like sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, right? Um, this one here, when they ask you what is a weak acid, <clears throat> a weak acid is partially ionized in aqueous solution. So like I said, this is the answers that they want. Don't go and make up something that is incorrect. So it's partially ionized in aqueous solution, right? And if they give you plenty lines, what you could do, <clears throat> hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, and this is what happens when we say it's ionized. It produces hydrogen ions in solution because that is what an acid is. An acid is a substance that produces hydrogen ions in solution, or you can say it's a proton donor, right? They could ask you what an, what an acid is. For a weak acid, what we typically use, we use vinegar, or what we call acetic acid, or ethanoic acid. But what happens in this case is it's a reversible reaction, and we get this. CH3COO minus plus H plus. 
Now, you see this sign here? That's a reversible sign. That's how we know if something is a weak acid, right? It is partially ionized. That is what that sign means, right? Now, they said state one other base that could be used instead of put a, um, sorry, instead of sodium hydroxide. Well, our next base we could use is potassium hydroxide, right? That's our next one we can use. Now, the third part, they said using the thermometer readings in figure one, complete table one by recording the temperature. So, we did this already. We read the thermometer and we completed the table, right? Plot the points of temperature versus volume of acid added using the axes on the pH, right? So they want us to plot the points and then they said draw two lines of best fit, right? Where the temperature is increasing, where the temperature is... Okay, so I'll show you what we need to do here. So what we're doing, we're going to draw a graph, right? So I hope you all see in here kind of small-ish, right? So let's see. Our first reading will be, let's see first reading here, 0 against 22.5. Now they helped us out there, they put in the numbers for us, right, which is a big help in the exam. So the first value is 0 against 22.5. So you need to make sure you know how to read these things there. So 22.5. Um, so we need to understand our scale first of all. So from here to here is 5, which means that every two line is actually 1. Every two line is actually 1 degree. Right? So if you want to get 22.5, that's going to be 21, hold on, 21, 22, right, so 22.5 is actually this point here, right, that's 22.5. The next point we're going to plot will be this one here, right, which is 3 cm cube against 29.5, so 3 cm cube against 29.5. So 3 cm cube is somewhere in the middle here and 29.5 is here. Alright? Now I know you may not see the graph properly, but just understand the concept itself. The next one here we plot in 6 against 36. So you're gonna plot 6 against 36. So 6 here against 35. Right? That's 36 there. 6 against 36. Next value we're going to plot here will be 10 against 41. So you could get a question like this in the exam. Eh? 10 against 41, that is going to be 40. This is 41 here, right? Oh, that's correct. 10 against 41. The next value we plot in here is 15 against 38. So 15 against 38. So the temperature is under drop now, right? 15 against 38. This is 35, 36, 37, that's about here, right? Next point I'm going to plot is 20 against 25. So 20 against 25 will be this value here, right? This is 20 against 25. And the last value is going to be 25 against 13.5. So 25 against 13.5. So this is 25 down here. And you want to get 13.5. So 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 by 5 is about here. So all I've done here is plotted the points. Right? This is typically how the graph looks, guys. Right? So I'll show you how we're going to get the end point from this graph. Those of you doing chemistry privately, this could come as a question in your paper, by the way. Right? Those of you doing it privately who have to do the paper tree. Now, let's see what I'm going to do. So, the question says, now please, when you're doing a thermometric titration, do not go and draw a smooth curve. If you do that, CXE is going to penalize you. Right? Do not go and draw a smooth curve. What you're doing here, look at what it said. You want to draw two lines, so they're telling you what to do, they're guiding you here. Two lines of best fit where the temperature is increasing and where the temperature is decreasing and hence determine the end point. So here's what we have to do. So let me get, uh, let me get some lines here. Let's get 
Here a little line that's a little thicker. Right, so I have two lines here. Right? Now what they told us, they tell told us to draw. Um so you're gonna take your points where it's increasing and you're gonna draw a line of best fit. Right? Now a line of best fit is a line where most of our points, right, pass through that line. So look at my first three points, they kind of line on that straight line there. So that's my first line that I'm going to draw. The second line now, right, I'm going to take that second line and we have to draw it through the rest of points, right, in such a way that, so we're going to have to do something like this, right, where it kind of passing through our points here, right. Now, let me see this point here. I might have to adjust this line a little bit, right? This one. Because our temperature is still increasing here. So, right, so this is what I'm going to use. So, what you need to do, you need to use draw two lines one for when the temperature is increasing, and one for when the temperature is decreasing. And where these two lines intersect, right? That is where I'm going to get my end point. So you're looking for the peak, where those two lines intersect, right? So let's... So I know some of you all may not have seen this before, but this is required. You all need to know how to do this. Right? Let's make this line longer. So what you're going to do, you're going to come to the graph and you're going to read off where that peak is. Right now, according to my graph here, right, I'm getting something like what is that there? That's ten point four, ten point eight. Right, that is about eleven point. Eat, right about 11.8 around it right that's the volume I'm getting right so what you're doing you're just reading off this value here this value here is what I'm reading off right here this value here right so you need to be able to read that value from that graph there I'm getting 11.8 so the answer for here is going to be 11.8 cm cube right so this is one way we can find the end point of a titration, right? And this is what we call a turbometric titration, guys, right? Yeah, so we're looking, so, so somebody's asking something there, right? Um, basically, we're trying to find the volume that gives us our highest temperature. You see, if you had drawn a curve passing through the points, you would have gotten the, the volume wrong. So we use the two lines, we construct the two lines in order to actually predict where is our peak on that graph. That's what you're doing. You're trying to find where is the peak, right? So you're not drawing a smooth curve. The tendency for students to draw a smooth curve is high. They want to draw a smooth curve, right? That's not what you have to do in this particular question. You're drawing two straight lines and where they intersect, that will give us our maximum temperature and we're going to read off the volume that corresponds to this maximum temperature, right? So in this case here, I've got an 11.8. Next thing they want, they want a balance equation. If we go back to the question, we were mixing, what were we mixing? Sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. So this is sodium hydroxide, NaOH, please use the state symbols here, plus, and you, they want a balance. Notice they put the word balance in, in bold. Eh? So it's 2 NaOH plus H2SO4 aqueous right and that's going to produce my salt which is Na2SO4 aqueous right plus 2H2 right so that's what's going to happen here next thing they want now they want the number of moles of sodium hydroxide used in this reaction right now let's go back here can't remember what they said about the sodium hydroxide so, oh, okay, so this information is pertaining to the sodium hydroxide. It's 2 mole per dm cube and it's 25 cm cube we use. 
So the sodium hydroxide was 2 mole per dm cube and we used 25 cm cube. Right? And we want to figure out how many moles we use. So all we need to do, we need to say 1000 cm cube right, of any which contains 2 mole. Right? Therefore, you want to work out for 25. So 25 cm cube of any which contains and we cross multiply. So it's going to be 25 multiplied by 2 over 1000 and that's going to give me that's 50 divided by 1000 and you're going to get 0 0.05 moles. Right? So one mark for that. And the last part, they want us to work out the concentration of the um, sulfuric acid. So, here's what's happening here. You know the mole ratio. According to this equation, 2 moles of sodium hydroxide should react with 1 mole of sulfuric acid. Right? According to the equation. So, 2 moles. So, let's see. 2 moles of NaOH reacts with... one mole sulfuric acid that's from the equation the equation told us that right therefore in terms of moles the amount of moles of the sodium hydroxide we used was 0 0.05 right 0 0.05 so we're going to say 0 0.05 moles any which reacts with and you're going to say 0 0.05 multiply by 1 over 2 right so that's 0 0.05 divided by 2 and that's going to give me 0 0.025 moles of sulfuric acid right so this is the number of moles we had at the end point here but the thing is based on the answer we got here this was the end point of the titration 11.8 cm cube so what we're going to say now is 11.8 cm cube, right, of the H2SO4 contains that answer we just got there. Contains 0.025 moles, right? Therefore, if you're working on concentration, we need to work out for a thousand. So it's a thousand cm cube of sulfuric acid. H2SO4 contains right and you're going to cross multiply so it's a thousand multiplied by 0 0.025 over 11.8 and that's going to give me 2.12 mole per dm cube right so that's my concentration of my sulfuric acid right so because ask me if you could use a fraction try to work in decimal for most of these questions right try to work in decimals right so Based on what they told us in terms of the broad topics, chances are you're going to get an acid-based titration, right? So what you need to be familiar with is all the calculations that I've just shown you, right? Um, I hope that this session was productive for you guys. So make sure you know how to write a balance equation. Go back through the video and make sure you understand why I did certain things in the calculations, right? Remember the first question is 25 marks, eh? and things they can ask you in the first question could be, what is a standard solution? What is a strong acid? What is a weak acid? Give me an indicator that I can use in the titration, right? There are, you can do a titration using a pipette and a burette and finding the endpoint using uh, uh, an indicator. That's one way you can do a titration. There's another way we can do a titration. It's called a thermometric titration. That's what I just did there, right? So be familiar with that. 
right? I mean, these are things that CXC can bring, and they bring, they brought them many times in the past already. All right. So, like I said, I hope that the session was productive for you all. I hope you all learned something, right? And again, for those of you who are interested, I do give online maths, ad maths, physics, and chemistry classes, right? My new classes begin in August. Right, so I'm taking in a new batch of Form 4s from August. Right, my existing Form 4 classes are still in progress. All right, so guys, um, that's it for me, and I hope that you all enjoy the class. Right, so like I said, those of you um, who usually attend the, the math session, tomorrow's session might start a little later than 3 o'clock though. Alright, so take care guys.